Today, I've got somebody who's got uh, a full-time job in doing big things in the real estate investment world. So Ryan Proffin and Adam Whitney were kind of just getting going, just ramping up their business. And uh, the gentleman that I'm about to speak to today has got a bigger business going and really doing some, some cool things and is in our uh, Seven Figure Altitude group. So I'm really excited to talk to David Gutierrez today. So David, what's up, man? Hey, thanks, Bill. Appreciate it, bud. Uh, super excited to be here. Um, finally, uh, be able to be on your show, which is uh, which is an honor. So, thank you for that. What? Uh, give some background on you. So, maybe your military sure. career, your family, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, uh, I'll start with with the most important, and then uh, go down. So, you know, a, a Christian. Uh, really, everything that we do is is uh, based on that foundation. And my family, I have a wife and three beautiful children. Uh, it's, it's relatively quiet here right now. It, it, we would not be able to be doing this if uh, they weren't out doing other things. So I really appreciate my wife for for taking them. She's not excited about taking my daughter to the dentist right now, but but hey, that's part of it, right? So I have three kids, a 10-year-old daughter, and then I have two boys, a seven-year-old and almost five-year-old uh, sons. And uh, we have, we're currently stationed in Maryland. This is my final tour. I'm the commanding officer of a cyber unit out here. Uh, so been in for 19, almost 19 years in June, and then looking to retire here uh, next June. Um, so a year from now. And uh, basically, you know, pretty standard military career, been a lot of places, done a lot of things, done some war zone stuff, done some, uh, you know, OCONUS uh, travel and living. And, and then uh, for the last five years, I've been in Maryland. And then this will be the, the culmination of a career uh, in the military. Meanwhile, as you talked about, you talk about options, right? And Stuart and I were Naval Academy roommates, been best buds for about 24 years. Uh, we, about three years ago, started talking about how to create options and opportunities for ourselves. And, and really, our one of the big goals that we have is to, either through education or providing hard assets, give folks within our network opportunities to create the their own options so that when they come to either the 10 year mark in their military career and they want to get out, they've created this other thing, whether it's real estate or investing, whatever it is that they can choose to get out or they can choose to stay in. It breaks my heart to hear people say, well, I have to stay in. That's not a place I ever wanted to be. Um, or, or they could choose to stay in because they love it till retirement. And then when they get out of retirement, they, they don't have that identity crisis when they get out of, hey, I don't know what to do. I don't have any other options. I, I have to do this thing. Saying I have to do is uh, just not not part of our lexicon or where we want people to be. So we started Storehouse 310, which is a turnkey provider. And, and that's just turning into other opportunities, right? As you know, you start one thing and then, you know, you start as a wholesaler and then you start doing multifamily and you start doing, lending money and all these different opportunities come. So right now we're, um, we've been extremely blessed to do business with some of your previous guests uh, that you mentioned. Adam Whitney in particular has been a, an amazing partner with us. Um, but we we effectively buy, rehab, sell turnkey properties. And then we've also done a couple of syndications and we're now looking in, into some other lending options to open to our network. I don't think people really grasp how big of a deal that is and how many people like what what it takes to get to that point. So if you could just take a minute to talk about what a commanding officer kind of means to you and how much of a challenge it is to get to that point in a military career. Yeah, you know, it's it's really interesting because it's even even after doing this for uh, about a year, it's always hard to uh, kind of grasp the the position. It's something that, you know, command is something, particularly in the Navy, that that you you start your career and if you decide to stay in, it's something that you're always striving for, right? You're striving for that. That and the first really opportunity that you have for that is as a senior officer, uh, which is for us as an 05, a commander, typically something you achieve around the, you know. Uh, 16, 17 year mark. Uh, so it, it's it's a position that's available to you once you've been in for a significant amount of time, almost two decades, and at least in in, in our case. And uh, I, I'm the overall responsible and have overall authorities over 320 plus sailors and civilians within within my command. Effectively, the CEO, you get paid no more, uh, but you get a ton of additional responsibilities, which is a pleasure and an honor for for. Uh, to be selected to be in that position. And it's highly competitive. I mean, you're talking about, um, you know, 10 to 15% of your peers will be conserved or foreign selected for, for command, uh, depending on, on what community you're in. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's definitely been an honor to, to be selected to be a commanding officer. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge honor. And like you said, it's CEO. So that gives you some context of not only the caliber of the guest of, of David that we have, but, um, but really like the, the amount of responsibility that comes with that. And, 
So the next question that I have is you guys started this business, you guys uh, ramped it up and it's a turnkey provider. You're also doing a lot of other things. Um, how does that correlate? Like the responsibilities that come from being a commanded officer and some of the jobs that you've done in the, in the military, how does it correlate with, um, with business outside of the military? What are some similarities and some differences that you've seen that might help some other folks? Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. Uh, there have been, and I've intentionally kind of sat, sat down and, and really analyzed the, the crossover skills. Uh, because I, I wanted to, I didn't want to take this 20 year career and not intentionally take advantage of the things that I've learned and, and, you know, specifically in leadership, right? Communication, how you talk to your sailors, how you get things done. How, how do you, how do you coordinate with a group of, of men and women and get them to do something that, that they don't want to do and that any really sane human being potentially wouldn't want to do? How, how do you get them to come together as a team have them embrace the mission, have them uh, ultimately own the mission and then execute the mission. And so there are so many different ways that there's crossover skills, there's crossover ideals, there's crossover um, just fundamental things that we accept as normal in day -to -day on a day-to-day -day basis that can put you at a next level when you go into a purely uh, business or civilian organization, which I think is really good. You know, I, I wanna talk a little bit about the demands that you have in your day with your family life, your job, which is, you know, over 300 sailors and civilians that you're managing and, and, and leading and in charge of, obviously stuff happens, things, uh, and, and you're also running a company, you have a business partner, you have all of this other stuff going on, a podcast, all kinds of stuff like that, right? So what I'd like to get across to some of the listeners is how do you do something like that? Like, because uh, I always hear, I don't have, you know, I got a full-time job, I can't do this, or I got a family, I can't do this. All the reasons why they can't do things, but there's perfect examples out there. And I've brought multiple on the podcast over these past, you know, three episodes or more. And those people are doing it and can do it. So it's possible. What are some of the, like, what does your day look like? What are some of the tips that you have? Um, it's just, let's talk through that. Yeah, so I think it starts with there. The two kind of things popped up when you said that it's prioritization and communication. Um, and really, so when I start my week, I look at the things that are our top priorities to me. And 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 I really, you know, one of the things that I've always been told is you look at your pocketbook, or I'm sorry, you look at your calendar and you look at your checkbook, and that'll identify for you what exactly is most important. So when I open my calendar, the things that I, and I list all this stuff out, right? So at, at, at 4.21 in the morning, I get a reminder that says focus. Well, that focus, what it is, and it's every single day, it's been this way for the last like however many years, the focus is all spiritually based. It's, I've got a couple of verses that are key that, that I want to focus on throughout the day, every day. And, and, and the opening line is, is something that, you know, I, I read this every day to just kind of again, to, to get the focus started. And it says, Lord, let me make a difference for you that is utterly disproportionate to who I am. And, and I read that every day because that's, that's the goal to, to be able to, to influence or impact in ways that I, I myself just don't, because I don't have the personality to do it. I don't have the charisma. I don't have the potential, the words to communicate or whatever it may be. Um, so that's number one focus. And, and that means that's my dedicated time to get into the word uh, as, as my top priority, my faith. And then PT, PT is, is something that I'm passionate about. It's, it is a part of who I am. And if I don't PT in the morning, like it's, it's not good for anybody, right? So You're going to have to explain what that's. Sorry, for. sorry. Not physical therapy. Uh, although that's coming soon too, because I'm getting old, but, uh, but tr working out, you know, physical training, working out. So every morning, whether it's a cardio workout, a lift or whatever it is, that's got to be a part of my day. Uh, and, and so that's maybe a, whether, whether that's a five thirty workout or whether that's a, an eight o'clock workout, I know that I've, I'm, I've booked it. And then I just get into the things that are, you know, before I get to work, uh, try to, you, Stu and I typically have a daily call. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the things that are priority for that day for the business. Uh, I'll make, I try to make morning phone calls with people that I really care about, show them, you know, through communication and effort that they're on my mind. Is that difficult? Uh, absolutely. But, but it's important. And, and then I get into work and usually I'm into work around seven, seven thirty uh, to the Navy and, and just get after it at that point. Right. And so then, as you know, you show up to work, especially as a, as a CEO or leadership position, you may have some calendar planned out, uh, but 
but that is uh, completely destroyed as soon as you walk in the door. Uh, one thing that I also have on my work calendar that is a non-negotiable from 12 to one o'clock every day, I, I have it blocked out and that's called my uh, per professional personal development time. And that'll be a time I step out of the office, go down to the car, either read a book uh, or, you know, go for a little walk or whatever it is, things that, that it's a intentional time for me to focus on being better in some way. And then from there, uh, you know, go through the rest of the day, come home. And, and when I talk about priorities, I'm trying to be out of the office by, you know, four o'clock every night so that I can get back home and be with the kids. And that's when, and, and that's, and I fail at this. And I know you've talked about this in the past, but having a box to put the phone away in and, and really dedicating that time, give it to my family, show them my intentionality in uh, not having distractions and, and just be present for them. And then usually that wraps up or after bedtime around nine o'clock and I'll usually do some business calls or, or um, you know, some other thing with storehouse to, to kind of wrap up the night. And then uh, hopefully in bed, before, you know, 9, 30, 10 o'clock to start all over the next day. And one thing I left off in the last part, um, the communication, communicate with your wives and your family. It, it is not, it, there will be conflict and there will be friction when you're like, hey, uh, I've got a podcast today and your wife says, well, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you put that on the calendar? I would have covered for you. It's a lot easier to say, Hey, next week, I've got a podcast at two o'clock on Wednesday. And, 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 and that makes things way more smooth. So communication is also key in all of these relationships in order to hit those priorities and, and, uh, potentially run a business. When things start getting a little bit, like I'll just reach out to each member separately We'll, we'll have conversation, you know, we'll bring light to it. You can make, you can almost bring laughter to every situation. I mean, if not every single situation, even the, even the toughest times, um, there's some laughter in it and you can find that and you just have to identify it. Uh, and, and I, and I think it's important to be very intentional and maybe you're not that kind of personality, but you can still at least bring light to a situation. You don't have to sit in the negative. Um, what do you think about, like in this real estate world, you you've worked with and networked with and and been around a lot of military folks that are getting into real estate and kind of ramping up their business. Um, do you think that they have an advantage over the civilian population? And if so, like what do you think it is about them that um, that makes them successful in what they do? And how could others kind of learn from some of that? Yeah, you know, I think um, at least in my experience. Uh, what I've seen is we, we speak a common language. So we're naturally drawn towards each other or naturally drawn towards vets. Like, you know, if you and I met on the street uh, without even knowing what we do from our businesses, we, we would immediately have a bond on the military side. Right. And, and I think that there's, there's a, a huge benefit in that. And, and most of the times we also rise to the challenge of those that are, that are like us. So like a, we may not intentionally be like, well, I want to compare myself to bill and I want to do what bill does, but you know, how many listeners does this podcast have or whatever. Right. And, and there's a natural sense of, of uh, competition. I think you get that with a lot of military folks, but, but there's also, and I shouldn't say I don't see this on the civilian side because I would be disingenuous. I've been in the military for 20 years. So my, my experience, uh, on a purely civilian environment is, is limited, but a lot of the folks that we deal with, they're, they're action takers. And that's a big difference is they are willing to take a risk and they're willing to, to, to pull the trigger and, and move forward on something right there. A lot of times the analysis paralysis only goes so far and they're like, okay, let's take action. Let's do it. And, and they're uh, a lot of times because of the skill set, uh, are decisive. They don't need as much, uh, input into the solution. They don't need a, a 80, 90% solution. They could maybe operate on a, you know, 50% or less to make a decision, move forward, adapt and, and, and adjust whatever strategy is that they're uh, pursuing in real estate. Uh, they're able to do that. And, and the crisis factor too, you know, when, when you get a text or 50 texts and they're negative and you contextualize that against uh, potentially being boots on ground, getting shot at, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it gives you at least a framework from which you can uh, kind of take a deep breath, back it up a little bit and say, okay, this is not that big of a deal. This is not a crisis. We can, we can handle this. Here's four different COAs and you go forward. So I, I just feel like there's an advantage because the military is so 
there's so many frameworks from which you can draw on. And that can also be, the, but that can also be to detriment, right? That, that can also kind of handcuff you a little bit to process oriented things. So I don't want to make it sound like because um, you're in the military, you have this, this great advantage, but there are different ways that, that I think that we are able to shine, uh, particularly when, when uh, adversity strikes. Yeah, I've seen some data on military entrepreneurs being like hyper successful in entrepreneurship because of uh, their background and a lot of those things that you said. Um, one thing that that I'll kind of just add on to that as you were talking, I was thinking like, what trying to put myself back in the shoes of when I got started, and it was really belief in myself. I think we have a lot of like belief and trust in our abilities over time. It's just kind of been like hammered into us. Um, you have to trust your decisions. You have to go with it. You have to be able to. Ah, uh, to make a quick decision and then be able, to, like you said, adapt and and flex into the right situation and just go and then figure it out as you go along the way. And you're constantly like blazing trails and learning new things and stuff like that, and having to just get new responsibilities and new jobs that you you don't understand, you don't know. Uh, they don't give you the whole answer, right? You have to go find it and figure it out along the way. And um, I think a lot of that is just that that kind of belief in yourself, and it's been. Um, it's been pushed on us that, especially as officers specifically, is we have to we have to lead these people. We have to be like, there's nobody. Everybody's looking at us all the time to make the decision. We make a call, you know. We don't get to, and sometimes there's not a rule book for it. You know, you just you have to make a decision, and then if it's the wrong one, you got to stand at the long at the end of the long table and explain why you made that decision with the information that you had at the time, and you didn't have, you know, the the next week that you guys have all looked at this and analyzed the numbers and the data and the weather and all that stuff. So um, I think we make very quick decisions where we believe in ourselves. We know that we can do it. And I think that can translate very easily to everyone else out there that's listening is think back to your experience, to your time in anything, whether it's sports or, or growing up or another job, like what, what kind of skill sets do you have that you can leverage in your business to start it or grow it? Um, determine depending on you, like a lot of what we're doing is like David and Stu's business looks very different than mine. Like they're going to set it up. It's probably pretty similar, especially for the military background, but they're going to set it up that suits them to their skill set, their abilities, uh, the way they want to operate their business, that those kind of things. Mine is going to look a little bit different. It's going to be off of my, uh, my strengths and my weaknesses and my team is going to look a little bit differently. And so yours is probably the same thing. So um, Dave, how can they find out more about you uh, other than the podcast? Yeah, so podcast is great. If you go to storehouse310turnkey.com, it has all of our stuff. So there's uh, uh, links to access us directly. There's links to our YouTube, uh, Instagram, you know, all the all the grams and the instas and the, uh, um, you know, the podcast. So that, that's probably the best place to go. Cool. Well, hey, thanks for hanging out with me. And I look forward to seeing your presentation. It's on, oh, that event is May 1st. Go to veteranslive.com, May 1st, uh, sign up. It's all day on a Saturday. We made it that way. So anybody with full-time jobs, active duty military folks like that, they can show up. So we're all taking a Saturday away from our family, away from our friends, all that stuff uh, to be there to give to you. We are also doing it from here in the studio. We have an awesome virtual platform that we use for our multifamily event that we just did. It's absolutely amazing. And we even upgraded it a couple more levels over the last couple of weeks to make it even better. So um, go to veteranslive.com. I'll see you guys there 100% free. I cannot wait for it. So David, yeah, thanks thank for hanging you, out Bill. with me.